Peace be upon you, ninth graders. Today we will study the chemical transformation of food. But before we start, prepare the following materials. A notebook and a pen, your support guide, and of course a phone or a laptop. Make sure that you sit in a quiet place, prepare your tools, stay optimistic during study and take notes, watch the video more than once, and ask your teacher for more clarification. At the end of this video, you will be able to distinguish between in vivo and in vitro experiment, list the necessary conditions for performing in vitro digestion experiment of starch, analyze experiments based on identification tests of food, define digestion or molecular simplification, identify the control tube and indicate its role, and recognize that maltose is the result of the digestion of starch. Let's start by recalling the organs of the digestive system. So first of all, we have the mouth, the esophagus, stomach, pancreas, small intestine, large intestine, and liver. The main function of the digestive system is to break down the food into smaller molecules that can be absorbed by our blood and then transported to all body organs. While food is in the digestive system, it undergoes mechanical and chemical digestion. Mechanical digestion is a physical process, mostly occurring in the mouth during chewing. Food is transformed into smaller pieces. The chemical digestion, however, is a chemical process. It begins in the mouth and continues in the stomach and the small intestine. Food is transformed from complex molecules into smaller ones. We will start with chemical digestion in the mouth. When you chew a piece of bread for a certain time, it mixes with saliva and takes a slightly sweet taste. Where does this sweet taste come from? Think, students, where does sweet taste usually come from? Things usually taste sweet because they contain sugar, right? So, our hypothesis would be the sweet taste is due to the presence of sugar. In order to verify our hypothesis, we must conduct an experiment. In fact, there are two types of experiments. We have in vivo experiments. These experiments are performed on living organisms. And there are in vitro experiments. And these experiments are conducted in test tubes. In this video, we will study the digestion in vitro of starch. To set up an in vitro experiment, first of all, you have to prepare a water bath at 37 degrees Celsius. Why 37 degrees Celsius? Because it is the normal temperature of the human body. In the second step, we prepare two test tubes and we label them A and B. We put cooked starch in both of them and we add a small amount of fresh saliva in tube A only. Finally, we place the two test tubes in the water bath for 15 minutes. This is the average time needed for starch digestion. Let's now describe the experiment. Cooked starch is put in two test tubes A and B. Then, fresh saliva is added to tube A only. The two test tubes are placed in a water bath at 37 degrees Celsius for 15 minutes. We will now indicate the variables. Recall that the controlled variables are the variables that are common in both test tubes. This would be cooked starch, temperature, and the time of the experiment. While the manipulated variable is the variable that is present in one test tube and not present in the other. So the manipulated variable here would be the presence of fresh saliva. And the responding variable that is the result that we are waiting for, which is the transformation of starch. Why do we use tube B if it does not contain saliva? Well, tube B is a control tube. It is used to compare the results at the end of the experiment. In this experiment specifically, it will help us compare the results in the presence of saliva and in the absence of saliva in order to conclude the role of saliva in starch digestion. Before we interpret the results of the experiment, recall that we apply iodine test to indicate the presence of starch, and we apply failing test to indicate the presence of reducing sugar. 
Why do we apply both tests? Because we are testing for two substances, starch and sugar. Note that we apply each test in the two test tubes at the beginning and at the end of the experiment in order to observe the changes and compare the results. Let's interpret the results of iodine test. Notice that at the beginning of the experiment, both tubes have dark blue color with iodine test. What does this indicate? It indicates the presence of starch. Now, notice that at the end of the experiment, the color of iodine solution remains brown-orange in tube A. What does this indicate? Yes, it indicates the absence of starch in tube A. However, the iodine solution changes into dark blue in tube B. What does this indicate? That's right. It indicates that tube B still contains starch. Now, let's interpret the results of the experiment. While analyzing, try to start with the result first, and don't forget to mention the manipulated variable. In this case, you have to mention the contents of the test tubes. After 15 minutes, the result of iodine test changes from dark blue into brown-orange in tube A that contains cooked starch and fresh saliva, while the results of iodine test remains the same, dark blue color, and tube B that contains only cooked starch. This means that tube A does not contain starch anymore, while tube B still contains starch. Now let's interpret the results of failing test. Notice that at the beginning of the experiment, both tubes have blue color with failing test. What does this indicate? It indicates the absence of reducing sugar. Now, notice that at the end of the experiment, the color of failing solution changes into brick red in tube A. What does this indicate? It indicates the presence of reducing sugar in tube A. However, the failing solution remains blue in tube B. What does this indicate? That's right, tube B still contains no sugar. After 15 minutes, a brick red precipitate is obtained with failing test in tube A that contains cooked starch and fresh saliva, while the failing test still gives a blue color in tube B that contains only cooked starch. This means that tube A contains a reducing sugar, while tube B doesn't. After interpreting these two experiments, you have certainly noticed that only in tube A where saliva is present, there was absence of starch and appearance of sugar. So, what do you conclude? Saliva transforms starch into reducing sugar. So, what happened exactly? Saliva contains an enzyme, which is a chemical substance, called salivary amylase, which breaks down the big starch molecules into smaller sugar molecules called maltose. What is an enzyme? It is a chemical substance produced by the body that facilitates the simplification of complex molecules. In this functional diagram, the enzyme, which is amylase, fits into the substrate, which is the cooked starch, in order to break it down into maltose, which is the product. Now, let's put all the pieces of the puzzle together. When this boy was eating bread, the bread in his mouth mixed with saliva. The salivary amylase in saliva broke down the big starch molecule in bread into smaller molecules called maltose. Maltose is a reducing sugar and that's why the boy felt a slight sweet taste. Thus, the hypothesis is validated. So, how do you define digestion? Well, starch is a complex molecule. Under the action of salivary amylase, it transformed into a simpler molecule. In fact, this is the concept of digestion. So, digestion is the breakdown of complex food molecules into simpler ones. Digestion is also called hydrolysis since it is a decomposition reaction in the presence of water. Hydro means water and lysis means decomposition. Now let's move to our application. The following equipment is prepared in order to perform the digestion of potato by saliva. So we have a water bath at 37 degrees Celsius, small pieces of boiled potato, test tubes, water and saliva. 
First of all, conceive using the equipment provided the setup that would allow this digestion. So first you start by labeling the two test tubes A and B. Then you put boiled potatoes plus water in both of them. Then you add saliva to tube B only. And finally you place the two test tubes in the water bath. Identify the control tube in this setup and state its role. Tube A is the control tube since it does not contain saliva. Its role is to help compare the results at the end of the experiment and indicate the role of saliva in the digestion of starch. Name the enzyme present in saliva. It is salivary amylase. Name the product of this digestion. The product is maltose. Note that maltose is a disaccharide. Now let's sum it up. There are two types of experiments, in vivo and in vitro. While preparing an in vitro experiment, set up the water bath at 37 degrees Celsius and prepare a control tube to compare the results at the end of the experiment. Digestion is the breakdown of complex food molecules into simpler ones. Saliva contains salivary amylase, which is an enzyme. Salivary amylase hydrolyzes starch into maltose. And finally, you will be assigned to copy and memorize the summing up on your notebook. This is all. Hope you enjoyed the lesson. Study well and keep safe.